Hi everyone, so sit down, get yourselves comfortable as I tell you a little tale of this monstrosity of a TV show pilot. There may be a few things you know and love about the selection, Maxon being a silly goofy little guy, America's absolutely unhinged behavior, the overall vibes of being at a castle, the ball gowns, balls. Well, the 2012 selection TV pilot had none of that. What is a TV pilot, you may ask? So basically in the entertainment industry, a pilot is the first episode created to pitch to the TV executives. And if they like it, then the rest of the show, the rest of the season will be made. So we are going to look at that first episode of the forgotten and discarded selection TV show. And you know what? Thank goodness for that, because what you are about to hear and witness is not high quality television. It honestly has the vibes of a Disney Channel original movie, and you know what, maybe if that were the case, if this were an actual Disney Channel original movie, then it might have done well. But the thing is, that's not what this is. This is a show that has a very large fan base with a whole series of books that have already been established, with characters that have already been established. You can't just go and butcher that. But before we really get into it, before we really dive deep down into this mess, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Green Chef. Green Chef helps me eat clean and live a healthy lifestyle. They have tons of delicious, nutritious recipes with clean ingredients like organic fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains. They also limit processed ingredients and don't use any artificial colors or sweeteners, so you can feel great about the food that you eat. What's really convenient about Green Chef is that ingredients come pre-portioned and often pre-chopped, with sauces pre-made in-house. It really can't get much easier than that. For whatever reason, I was under the impression that eating well can be boring, some of you might think the same, but it doesn't have to be. Green Chef's meals satisfy your cravings for exciting, flavorful meals made nutritious. Now I'm going to show you a little video montage of me making one of my Green Chef meals. It's lunchtime and I'm in the mood for chicken and and bell pepper quesadillas. I love how the instructions are very easy to follow. There's also pictures along the way so you can know what each step is supposed to look like, which is helpful for me because girl, I need to be validated every step of the way. From start to finish, this meal only took about half an hour, which is amazing for me because a big reason why it's hard to maintain a clean and healthy lifestyle is that it takes time and effort and sometimes I'm just lazy, but now I get the best of both worlds. It's convenient and nutritious. And it's so good. Use my code TODHUNTER50 to get 50 50% off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Thank you so much to Green Chef for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. The episode starts off with a little backstory narration. The countries of the West banded together to form one great land, Ilaya. First of all, I've been pronouncing it Ilya all this time, so my bad. So right off the bat, My Girl America is introduced, obviously, and Oh my god. Why does her hair look like that? I mean, it's, it's barely red. I mean this with no hate to the actors at all, with peace and love. But what did the casting director see in this particular actress where they thought like, oh yes, that, that right there, that's, that's America. I honestly truly can't understand why. Physically speaking, obviously she doesn't really embody America. She's not what I envisioned. But you know what? I'm gonna give her a chance. Like you always gotta give people a chance. If they're not like how you physically imagine them in your head, sometimes they might be, they might do the character justice. They might do a perfect job embodying their vibes. When she speaks, maybe she'll embody that sassy, spunky character we're all familiar with. You didn't even enter the selection because you can't find true love by lottery. Nope. Then we have May. And unlike in the books where May is this like sunshine character, very energetic, in this adaptation, May is more or less the same age as America and her sole character trait is wanting to be a part of the selection, get to be with Prince Maxon and all that. She is merely a husk of her original character. Then we're introduced to my boy Aspen Ledger and oh my God, Peter, what are you doing here? Again, physically speaking, not at all how I pictured Aspen. But if you think his vibes are wrong, just take a gander at my boy Prince Maxon. Again, you can see that despite the hair color, the vibes just aren't there. I'd say that um, my boy William, who plays Aspen, his vibes are more fitting towards Maxon. They're not perfect, but I could see him doing a better job. This guy, I don't really think he has a place because he's not serving Aspen either. But again, maybe when he speaks, I'll be mistaken. Of the young women whose names are about to be called, I feel confident that I will find a bride as exceptional as my mother. <laughs> I don't understand how you can make an adaptation of a book and have every single one of the characters be nothing 
like the characters from the book. If that's the case, then what's even the point? What's even the point? And you know, I'm not talking physical necessarily appearance. I'm talking about vibes. Recently, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's been a trend of making a bunch of adaptations of characters that we that are already established and the actors that are being chosen for these roles don't look like the previous image of the character which can be fine as long as the vibes are maintained zero vibes have been maintained in the making of this video so basically on the report the selected girls are announced and america was picked naturally and my girl was flabbergasted because she never even entered herself and side note girl that is not the radiant smile described in the books you'll never guess who did enter her though her father! Her father? Please! Her father in the books would have never! So naturally, America is pissed. She runs to Aspen in the night in their secret barn attic hideaway, and they immediately start getting down and dirty. America, there are other things we can do. They don't break up that night like in the books though. The next morning, America's mom casually says to her that Aspen joined the army and America was like, bitch, what? So she runs to Aspen to confirm if it's true and he shows her this giant fucking brand on his pectoral. So then America and Aspen break up in that moment for reasons that are unclear. So Aspen joining the army means that A, you know, he could die. B, um, he can't like have a girlfriend or marry for the next 10 years. So that's the pretty much the driving force behind their breakup. But the thing is they would have had to wait to get married like anyway, because they need to save up all their funds, right? And Aspen during this argument never once pushed America to enter the selection herself, which was the main catalyst for America to enter the selection in the books, which, you know, kind of makes sense a little bit. 10 years is a lot of time. Asking America to wait 10 years isn't really fair, but that begs the question, if Aspen is joining the army partially so that he could be with America, why is he breaking up with her? Riddle me this, William. But anyway, now that they've broken up officially, America actually wants to go to the palace to get away from him. On the plane to get there, she meets Ashley, not Marley. And you know, you want to know why Marley isn't there? Because Marley isn't in this adaptation at all. Which is weird because Marley is a very big character. You know, through these three books, The Selection, The Elite, The One, she plays pretty big roles through that. She also plays roles in The Heir and The Crown. So I don't really know why they made the decision not to have Marley be in this adaptation, but to me that makes just no sense. Had this pilot have been picked up, how would they even do that? Like with the, like, how would the plot plot? Celeste wasn't on the plane either, but she'll be introduced later. So anyway, Ashley, America, and their bodyguard are getting off the plane to be transferred into these cars to be taken to the palace. But as they're walking down the steps of the plane, their bodyguard gets shot and dies. Rebels are attacking them. America gets knocked out by one of them and taken to the palace. Meanwhile, Ashley gets captured and held hostage by said rebels. However, America and the rest of the country are told that um, Ashley chose to drop out of the competition. They're keeping this whole situation under wraps. America wakes up in her palace bedroom surrounded by Lucy and the Queen. I should mention now that like every single other fucking character in this pilot, Amberly and Clarkson are not themselves. Amberly is the manipulating girl boss queen. Meanwhile, Clarkson is like the politically driven looking out for his son, King. I don't want you to get hurt, son. So then we have the big moment where America and Maxon first meet. And let me just say, this scene made me want to cry. America is not having a panic attack in this scene. Oh no, she just decides to have a nightly stroll. She wants to catch a glimpse of the moon because that's like her and Aspen's thing because they met, they meet at night, I guess. I guess the view of the moon from her bedroom window was not good enough. She needed to go to the downstairs window for whatever reason. Maxon catches her hiding in these plants and their interaction made me want to die. Lady America, you will stand and bow. Forgive me, your majesty. I didn't mean to spy. Yet you were lurking in the greenery. To hide, not to spy. I cannot emphasize how little chemistry these two people had. And it's not necessarily the actor's fault. The dialogue was atrocious. Guards have specific orders to keep the selected safely in their rooms at night. I wanted to see the moon. Maxon didn't even say my dear even once. There was no banter. America was not yelling at him at all. In fact, this is what she said. We're all supposed to be so thrilled to be given the opportunity to compete for your affection like a bunch of cats in an alley fight, but it's... It's a... What? It's kind 
of a farce. Bitch, kind of a farce? Hello? Also, on top of this dialogue being what it is, there's so much exposition that I couldn't even focus. Side note, Marley's replacement is this girl named Fiona, who is played by Amori from the 100 Slay. When the next day, Maxon and America meet for their first official meeting, America apologizes to him and he promptly asks her to leave. I think sometimes I should think before I speak. Please bring the next young lady. Gotta love that flirtatious banter. Then there's the report, and for whatever fucking reason, Maxon's like, you know what? The girl who stands out the most to me right now is America. And then America replies, and she's like, the thing that I like most about Maxon is his forgiving heart. And so now he's kind of like, well, maybe I should let her stay. So he decides to let her stay, and now I should finally probably mention Celeste. I'd say that out of all the characters, she's probably the closest we're gonna get to anyone even remotely similar to the books. But with that being said, I'd say she's still missing that it factor. Like she's kind of mean, but there's there's that little extra something missing that would really make her embody Celeste. So Celeste finds out that Fiona has a secret daughter and basically blackmails her into leaving the competition. Then Amberly and Celeste sort of kind of team up in order to like <laughs> defeat America because I guess they're both manipulating queens. Now let's talk about America and Maxon's final interactions. So during during the night, Maxon and America end up meeting somehow. We don't really get told how, but they're like meeting. And he confronts her about being in love with somebody else and then immediately proceeds to kiss her. And then she pushes him away and she's like, no, stop. And you know what he says? Stop. Your loyalty is admirable. What? She should have kneed him in the balls. What the fuck is this? Then the next day, America proposes the deal about, you know, being his friend on the inside. And then Maxon's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, I'll, I'll make you stay until the elite then. Way to kill the suspense, hello? <laughs> the one thing that this Maxon does that's even remotely similar to the books is that he gives America a different, bigger room where she has a balcony where she can go out and look at the moon whenever she pleases. This is what I'm talking about. This is what we needed to see. Every single other decision they've made about Maxon in the show has been literal trash, except Maxon's outfit here, Loki Slade. I think I actually imagined this exact outfit in my head while reading the books at one point. So, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. So that was the pilot, truly a roller coaster from start to finish. Poor Ashley is still being held hostage through all this time. So my thoughts and prayers to her. If y'all have seen the pilot yourselves, let me know your feels. As always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you had a good time and I'll see you next time.